Plot Summary of Brick Lane by Monica Ali Brick Lane by Monica Ali starts in the village of Gurupur in rural Bangladesh, where Rupan is about to give birth to her oldest daughter, Nazneen, two months before she was due. Everyone at the birth, including Rupan's sister-in-law Mumtaz and the village midwife Benisa, thinks Nazneen is dead until she starts kicking and screaming, even though she does so in a weak and listless way that makes it clear she needs medical help right away. Rupan doesn't take Nazneen to the hospital. Instead, she lets fate decide what will happen to her daughter. Friends and family, especially her father Hamid, are shocked when Nazneen lives and grows up to be a simple, thoughtful child who, like her mother, decides that most things in life should be left up to God. Hasina, Nazneen's sister, is beautiful and rebellious from birth. At 16, she runs away to get married to a local boy, which makes Hamid very angry. For 16 days, he waits at the edge of the village, ready to cut off his daughter's head if she comes back. She doesn't come back, though, and Hamid, who lost his wife Rutban after she fell on a spear and died, sets up for Nazneen to marry Chanu, a Londoner in his 40s. Chanu and Nazneen get married and move to Tower Hamlets, a low-income housing area in London with a lot of Bangladeshi immigrants. Nazneen feels lonely and homesick, so she spends most of her day cooking, cleaning, and watching her neighbor, a white woman with a lot of tattoos, drink and throw her beer cans out the window. Mrs. Islam, an older widow who claims to know everything about everyone in Tower Hamlets, and Razia Iqbal, an irreverent but kind woman with two young children and an angry husband who gets very angry when she goes against his wishes or the norms of the local Bengali community, sometimes pay Nazneen a visit. Hasina writes to Nazneen often to tell her about her life with her young husband, Malik, who works on the railroad and, in Hasina's opinion, is very smart and talented. Hasina says in her letters that Malik wishes she were a better wife, but Nazneen doesn't find out the truth until Hasina leaves Malik for Dhaka and a job as a seamstress in a garment factory. Malik had started beating her, so Hasina left him and ran to Mr. Chowdhury, who became her landlord. Hasina doesn't have much money, so Mr. Chowdhury gives her a discount on her rent, saying that she's like a daughter to him. Nazneen tells herself she has it pretty good. Chanu is kind, even though he is old and fat. He doesn't beat her, and their apartment has more chairs, cabinets, and end tables than they could ever need. Doctor Azad, a doctor in the area, comes to dinner with them sometimes, and he is also kind to her. Still, Nazneen doesn't love her husband. In fact, she thinks it's sad and annoying that he thinks he's important. She is always unhappy, and the only time she gets a glimpse of happiness is when she watches ice skating on TV. Then she closes her eyes and imagines being led by a handsome man who smells like limes as she skates across an arena to loud cheers. Nazneen doesn't feel true happiness until she has a son named Rakib, who is very handsome. Nazneen says she will live for her son and do everything she can to take care of him and be a good mother. Then, when Rakib is about a year old, he gets very sick and dies. The story then moves to Hasina's point of view, told in letters to Nazneen. Hasina writes to Nazneen about her job in a garment factory, where she has made friends with three other sewing women and one young man, Abdul, who always wears a clean shirt to work. Hasina is very happy for a few months, working at the factory and living in Mr. Chowdhury's apartment building. But then rumors start to spread that she had sexual relations with both her landlord and Abdul, and Hasina is fired from her job. Mr. Chowdhury brutally rapes Hasina because he thinks she betrayed him by sleeping with Abdul. He, too, has heard the false rumor that Hasina is sleeping with Abdul. Hasina tells Nazneen in a letter that she is ashamed and sad. Everywhere she turns, she sees signs that God doesn't like her. She ends up becoming a prostitute. Hasina seems to have lost everything, but then a serious albino man who works as a night shift supervisor at a shoe factory proposes to her. Hasina tries to tell him that she is not good enough for him, but he won't listen. So, even though she is still legally married to Malik, she marries Ahmed and moves with him to a much better part of the city. Hasina is happy again for a while, but Ahmed leaves her in the end. At the end of this set of letters, 
Hasina says she will write again when she has a stable address. Nazneen now has two young daughters, Shaana, who is stubbornly against anything that has to do with her Bengali parents, and Bibi, who works hard to make everyone happy. Chana quit his job as a low-level government worker right before Rakib died. Now, he goes from job to job without getting anything done. He gives Nazneen a sewing machine one night. Soon, he starts bringing her jeans, skirts, and dresses to the tailor to be fixed. Chana tells Nazneen that he is carefully saving money for when they go home to Bangladesh, where he hopes to start over. Nazneen works all the time. When Chana gets a job driving a taxi, a different man brings Nazneen sewing to her door. This is Karim, who is the uncle of the man who owns the sweatshop where she has been working for the past year. Karim is everything Chanu is not, young, passionate, and sure of himself. Nazneen falls deeply in love with him. She starts going to meetings of Karim's pro-Islam youth group, the Bengal Tigers. After a meeting that was very heated, Nazneen and Karim start sleeping together. Hasina, on the other hand, now works as a maid for James and Lovely, a wealthy couple who met her when she was living in a Dhaka home for broken women. Hasina's jobs are to clean the house and take care of Jimmy and Daisy, the children. Zaid cooks and takes care of the garden. He is a strange man who likes politics and kung fu. Hasina often sits in silence with Saida, the maid who lives next door. Saida is just as happy with her life as Lovely, who is beautiful and cares about her status. Hasina sometimes goes to the hospital to see her friend Manju whose husband attacked her with acid and hurt her. Hasina is lucky to have a safe place to live and a steady job, but she doesn't own anything in James and Lovely's house. She, too, is getting antsy. Back in London, Nazneen is tired from trying to keep the peace at home, where Chanu and Shaana are always fighting, and from feeling guilty about her affair with Karim. One night, she falls over while washing the girl's clothes. Chana says that she is suffering from nervous exhaustion. Nazneen stays in bed for a few days, giving in to her illness. When Chanu's attentions get to be too much, she gets up and goes back to work. Karim, whose visits had stopped all of a sudden, comes to see her and says he's been out of town visiting family. Nazneen is mad at him and asks him what he sees in her. He tells her that he loves her because she is real, a real village girl. This reminds Nazneen of what Chana said about her when they first got married, that she was unspoiled. Chanu wants to move the family back to Bangladesh, so Nazneen tells Karim. Karim tells her not to go. He tells her to let Chana go alone and then sue him for divorce because he left her. Nazneen starts sending Hasina some of the money she makes from sewing. She does this behind Chano's back and feels bad about it until she learns that Chano has been borrowing money from Mrs. Islam, who is not only a chronic gossip but also a dishonest and cruel usurer. Chano and Nazneen owe a lot of money to Mrs. Islam because he was careless and naive. Mrs. Islam uses her sons to scare people into paying much more than they owe. Chano walks in on Karim working on his computer one day. Nazneen starts to think that Chano knows the whole truth even though he didn't see her and Karim make out. This makes her feel almost too guilty to live with. At the same time, tensions are rising between the Bengal Tigers and the Lion Hearts, a rival white gang on the Tower Hamlets estate. Marches and counter-demonstrations are planned, then cancelled, and then planned again. Chana finally buys four plane tickets to Bangladesh with money from DR. Azad, and Nazneen knows that he is finally going to do something, they are going home. Hasina writes a letter to Nazneen about what happened before their mother died. Hasina tells Nazneen that Rupan's life was unhappy because their father, Hamid, was unfaithful. Nazneen did not know that their father was unfaithful. Hasina also tells Nazneen that Rupan's death was not an accident, as they had always been told, but a suicide. Suicide is the worst thing you can do against God and fate, and Nazneen, who used to look up to her mother and think she was perfect, suddenly has a different view of the world. She makes the decision to take control of her life. When Mrs. Islam comes with her sons to get what Nazneen and Chano still owe her, 
Nazneen refuses to pay because of what Hasina told her about Rupban. She shows Mrs. Islam what she did with the numbers. Her math shows that she and Chanu have not only paid off the debt, but also given at least £300 in interest. Nazneen doesn't want to pay any more money. Later, Nazneen takes a train to Karim's house to tell him that they have to break up. She has realized that she had put together his personality like a quilt, making him out of what she wanted him to be. Now the seams are showing, and she knows that they don't have a future together. He takes the news pretty well, assuming that she is breaking up with him because she can't stand the thought of sinning against God any longer. Back at home, there are a lot of boxes everywhere. Nazneen hasn't told Chana she won't go with him yet. He's busy doing last-minute things, and she feeds the girls dinner and goes to bed. Bibi wakes her up in the middle of the night to tell her that Shaana has left to avoid going to Dhaka with her parents. Nazneen goes out looking for her in a panic, but she ends up on Brick Lane, where police are stationed and block her path. They tell her she can't keep going. They have been told to leave the area because there is a fight going on. Nazneen jumps over a barrier to find her daughter. Instead, she finds a group of Bengal tigers fighting with each other. She finally finds Shayana at a restaurant nearby and brings her home. With only an hour left before the whole family was supposed to go to the airport, Nazneen tells Chanu that she will stay behind. He's sad, but he gets why she's leaving, just as she gets why he's leaving. They're both so sad that they can only hold each other. Over time, Nazneen and Razia have started their own sewing business. Chana writes to Nazneen often from Dhaka, telling her about his workouts and what he eats. She doesn't know what he does for a living, and he doesn't tell her. He also calls once a month, and during one of those calls, he tells Nazneen that Hasina, whom he once saw at James and Lovelies, has gone missing again. She went away with Zaid. After another year, Razia, Shaana, and Bibi force Nazneen to get on a bus. As a surprise, they are taking her blindfolded into town. When they get off the boat and take off the blindfold, Nazneen sees that Razia and the girls have taken her to an ice skating rink. Nazneen doesn't want to step out on the ice. She tells her friend and daughters that she can't skate in a sari, but Razia tells her that this is London and she can do whatever she wants. About the author. Monica Ali's father was from Pakistan and her mother was from Britain. She was born in East Pakistan. Her family moved to Bolton, England, when she was three years old. Later, she went to Oxford to study philosophy, politics, and economics at Wadham College. Brick Lane, which was her first book, came close to winning the Man Booker Prize. She has also written Alan Tejo Blue, In the Kitchen, An Untold Story, which are all novels. Her husband, Simon Torrance, and their two children live with her in South London. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.